Hi guys, are you here from Blender Bros and in this video I'm gonna show you how you can train your brain in order to come up with better ideas for your 3D models in Blender or any other software and we're gonna be using AI for this but not in the way you think so let me show you. This thumbnail is important for this video because we're going to be coming back to it all the time and it's going to be useful for a few things. But let me tell you what I want to talk to you about in this video. Recently, I came up with an idea for a video that's going to be packed with tips for anyone who wants to improve Blender performance. And that's all of us. You know, people with slow PCs, people with fast PCs. It doesn't matter what kind of PC you're running. Even if you're working at NASA, you're still going to have to optimize Blender to a degree because Blender has limitations, right? But if you have a slow PC, that's a very valuable video, especially for you, so go ahead and watch it. If you haven't watched it, it's fantastic. It's packed with valuable tips. Now, imagining something and coming up with an ideas in your brain is great, but if you want to put them in practice, and if you actually want to, you know, realize these ideas, you need to know how to model in Blender. And if you're still new to it, and if you would like to learn how to do it properly and as efficiently as possible, I highly recommend our course, which is called the Hard Surface Accelerator. We have over 4,000 students in that course, and over 4,000 results. It's a fantastic curriculum, very tight, which is going to teach you everything you need and none of the fluff, all the menus, all the tools, the whole workflow is explained and much more. There are many bonuses in this course. One of them is actually a bonus on principles of design, which is going to help you further improve your design skills. And there's also a whole section on rendering, which is going to help you greatly in creating really well-polished high-end renders for your portfolio. And your portfolio is basically your business card. So go ahead, grab the course. The link is in the video description. If you're going to grab it now, you're going to save 50% on the deal. Deal. So it's a fantastic course, a fantastic deal. Go ahead, get it. Like I said, the link is in the video description. Now let's get back to our video. Now, what I want to talk about is this thumbnail and also the graphics and how this came about and what it's going to lead to because it's even more important. So let me explain. I use AI in my, you know, in my work every day. So does Josh. We use, you know, uh, ChatGPT. We use Claude. We use uh, Fell AI. We use so many different AI tools. Our video editor is using AI tools. We use AI because it speeds up a lot of things, but also it's improving your creativity and your, you know, sort of like a bank of knowledge and the way you think. And what I mean by that is there's a really interesting thing, especially with ChatGPT. And by the way, ChatGPT is open on my screen 24/7 on my left hand. Screen screen I have ChatGPT on my right hand screen I got Discord to talk to Josh and this doesn't change okay the ChatGPT is open all the time on my left side because I always need it it, it just just not non-stop I you know ask questions verify stuff consult stuff look for stuff Google stuff through ChatGPT because it's way better than Google so in addition you know ChatGPT is learning the way you think the way you talk your style you know it's it's very clever and it's improving all the time so the more information you feed him the better it gets and it actually remembers all the charts so if you want to retrieve something from the past you can do this very easily with one prompt so it's you know it's brilliant so what i've done i want to show you right the whole process um i started with a very simple statement that i'm running a video on how to make blender faster uh, for slower pcs you know, so like RAM usage, cycle, settings, purging, shadow, simplification, blah, blah. So it said, you know, these are four solid tips, but it gave me some other ideas. I didn't like all of them, right? Some of them were, you know, mad, kind of like too abstract, okay? So I said, I don't want to run too many tips, by the way, don't, don't mind typos. I have typos all over the place. I think I'm dyslectic. But anyway, I want to get rid of modifiers if you don't need them. Tips like they're practical tips that are going to be very useful for people who model, for people who do actually practical stuff in Blender every day, right? So he kind of, you know, cleaned it up and gave me a kind of more concise list that made more sense to me and kind of agreed with what I, I know. Because sometimes when you, let's say, create a video or create something, anything that you create in, in Blender, let's say you're creating a sci-fi model, and your knowledge is very limited in terms of visual knowledge, in terms of, you know, accessing your visual library. So, for example, if you wanted to, let's say you're an engineer and you're creating an engine from scratch. Even though you know, you know, the structure of an engine, all the parts, everything, you may forget something. So it's really important to have this kind of a reference in shape of images of engines. So, oh, shit, I have to put this one in, right? The same with ChatGPT, you know, it's like you, I, I know all these things, but I don't 
and I cannot recollect them at this specific moment in time. So I have ChatGPT to help me with bringing out these memories, right? And this list is really helpful because I was like, oh shit, this one is actually pretty good. So I took this and sort of ran a video um, based on these and, you know, added some other stuff, removed some stuff, you know what I mean? So made it my own. Now, next thing I needed is a thumbnail. And I was saying like, dude, I need some time that's going to be catchy. You know? So give me some ideas for text, right? For the title. And the first one hit me really hard. And I was like, shit, make Blender run on a toaster. And that spiked, you know, my brain. And it was like, hang on a second. What we could use is we could use, I immediately saw this in my, in my head. When I saw this text, I was like, boom, just image appeared. I want to have an old PC, kind of like a yellowish PC, right? Like, you know, the old IBM on the old Amiga with the combined screen, the old screen, the thick one, right? And I, I want it to be combined with a toaster on the top and a crank in addition to, to that, because, you know, it's going to look even more kind of ghetto, right? And this is going to emphasize really strongly the slowness of the slowest PC, right? So I said, listen, uh, you know, lol, make Blender run on the toaster. So he said, you know, I knew you're going to like this idea, right? So bro, I'm dead. And, you know, that's genius. So whip me some graphics for it. And he came up with this. And I was like, this is garbage, you know, because it's not sci-fi. This will not my, fit my channel. I don't like that. I want something more sci-fi. So I told him, look, make something, you know, maybe more cartoonish, maybe something in like a Borderlands st style, you know. He came up with this one. I don't like it either, okay? So then I said, you know, extend the ratio. I don't know why, but ChatGPT always put stuff in a very a narrow ratio and it's not going to fit YouTube. So I always have to adjust it and fix it myself. But, you know, that's beside the point. So it keep going. And then, you know, now forget the uh, sci-fi vibe and forget the break. And I don't even know what break I'm talking about. But anyway, give me some original idea or two running Blender on a toaster shit, right? And he actually started dropping some text ideas. And I was like, maybe some garbage PC ancient one with some crank on the side. You see, like, that's kind of spiked my ideas running in my brain, sort of stimulated kind of, you know, the visuals in my brain, right? And he came up with this and I was like, okay, that is sick. That's exactly what I want, right? So that's hysterical, but I need a full table, mate, because I needed to fit it into, into Photoshop. And he couldn't really get it done. He was trying to create stuff, but he couldn't really get it done properly. Then he did this, but I didn't like the angle. So I came back to this idea. I grabbed that, right? And I ran with this thumbnail. And then my wife came over, right? And she said, this is really fun at Tamna. I really like that. You should model this for YouTube. And I was like, that's actually a genius idea. But I was thinking, okay, the crank, you know, the toaster, the style doesn't really fit my style. So what I need is something a bit more sci-fi. So that kind of, you know, stimulated my brain to work further on this. And I thought that maybe on the top, I'm going to be, you know, adding some kind of um, like a sci-fi receiver. And on the side, I wanted like a card to, to you know, kind of like a cartridge. Um, we used to have cartridges for games. You probably don't know about it or don't remember. But that was actually after cassettes because the cassettes were first. There was cassettes where you had to adjust the, the head with a screwdriver. It was hysterical. It was going through the modem to the PC. There was like Atari 64. Then we had cartridges and, and floppy disks, the big ones, right? And then the small ones. And that was the evolution of, you know, of PC gaming. But anyway, I digress. But um, this idea was cool but i wanted to make it a bit more sci-fi a bit more tucked in to run it on my channel so what i've done is i actually asked judge gpt to come up with a bit more sci-fi version of this and he actually did so let me find that so what i've done is i put it back in chat gpt and i said you know yo here is what i want you to do i want you to take this image and give me a more sci-fi polished version of it so less in borderland style more in the style of my folio and i linked my folio right so he came up with this which is way closer to what i wanted but then i said you know i forget the wood right make it more sci-fi he didn't get that he just put some highlights i didn't like that then i said make it more high tech which he did this is actually more high tech and looks much better, but I still didn't like it, right? And I gave him an example for my folio, and I said, you know, do something like this. And he cleaned it up, and he came up with this one, which is really cool, right? And then I give him a bit more tips. So I said, you know, can you give me some other ideas for the crank, perhaps a lever or some card swipe, right? And he did, but I said, you know, bro, visuals, the fuck is this text image, mate, right? And then he did this, and I was like, that's cool, but we need to get rid of the toaster, right? So I said, get rid of the toaster, he did this. 
and I really like this cartridge. I'm not crazy about this top, so I said to refine it further, he needed this. He removed the cartridge, but you know, he added this lid. Now what I can do is I can take all these images, put them in my head and create something original based on that. So you see, that's how you can start designing stuff. You can start putting things in Midjourney or in ChatGPT. The disadvantage of Midjourney and you know other softwares or this AI similar to Midjourney is that you have a very limited sort of a way of prompting because you cannot talk to it. You just have to drop a prompt. It's very impersonal. ChatGPT is what I like about it is that it not only understands you know, texts and sentences, right? Like, for example, I say, bro, it's, you know, imagine it's 20,657, not 1800s, right? Or 1900s. And make this shit more clean, uh, clean cut sci-fi, not a toy from Fallout 4. And he did this, which is, you know, kind of in between Fallout 4 and something that's modern, made kind of looking old, right? So I think that's a brilliant way of working with AI tools and kind of you know, pushing your creativity further because you can work with it. And like I said, Midjourney can't do it because she's, you know, it's limited to prompts and, and you have to always adjust the prompt. Uh, but this one can actually spit ideas based on your previous charts, based on the interactions between you and the AI. So it's going to draw from the experience and from the memory, which is really cool. And then obviously you can switch it to chart, you know, the uh, 4.5, uh, like here, which is really cool. And uh, though this one is a little bit more oriented towards, you know, kind of like text fixing less, I think less creative work, but more kind of like an, you know, intellectual work, which is text, copy, you know, all that. I would really recommend you start doing this and you can, for example, you know, grab multiple ideas from different people, put them in chat GPT, tell him what you're thinking about and ask him to create some kind of ideas for you. And based on what you see, you can help to stimulate your brain with maybe maybe pushing the ideas you already had in your brain further. Because you're going to start seeing stuff like, for example, you know, this cartridge, right? I really like this cartridge. I don't like this one. It's boring, but this one is cool. So what I could do is I could go back to the original idea, which I kind of liked, which is this, uh, you know, original idea of this uh, PC with a keyboard being kind of separated from the PC. The screen is kind of like popping on top, looks a bit more old, but so I would swap the crank for the swipe. I would swap the toaster top for some kind of like a, maybe, you know, Wi-Fi device or something receiving signal or whatever, you know, the internet signal and kind of combine all these ideas into one and run a video tutorial on that, which is something we're going to be doing in the next video. So we're going to take all this knowledge, all these ideas, and put them in a video that's going to be basically showing you how to model that using Blender tools and add-ons. So anyway, that's it. And that's how I advise you start working. You need to start leveraging AI every day in whatever process or whatever creative process you are, you know, involved in because it's going to help you tremendously to improve very quickly. It's just like a difference between learning from books 40 or 30 years ago when you actually had to go to a library, look for the book, read the whole book to find stuff that you, you know, think it's useful versus going to YouTube and watch videos that are specifically targeting, you know, problem you may be having and you have so many videos to choose from and it's so quick. Now we're advancing further, we're going to AI territory, which, which is insane because AI has access to internet. It can pull stuff in seconds that you, you know, you take you a long, a lot of time to find. Not to mention you can mix all that together with the way you think and your style because he understands you, because he learns based on what you feed him, the prompts, the way you talk, you know, all the, you can feed him your image, images of your work, etc., and kind of train it to think in your style. You see what I mean? So this is very valuable and it's going to be becoming more and more powerful. And like I said, definitely should be, you know, utilizing AI in your work every single day. So anyway, that's it for the video. I hope it's going to help you to improve your workflow, to improve your creativity. And I really hope you're going to start working with AI, you know, stop fearing AI, start, start embracing AI because the AI is the future. And if you're going to stay away from it, you're going to be left behind. There's no other way around it. You know, time will not go back. People will not stop using tools that actually save time and are extremely helpful and fast because time is everything and you cannot buy more time, which means it's a, it's a you know, not an infinite, commodity it's a very expensive commodity you only have 24 hours in a day and if you're not going to use it cleverly and wisely then you're going to be left behind you will lose so start leveraging ai 
stop worrying about you know ai taking over your jobs or whatever you need to adjust you need to try to learn how to fit in and how to embrace it and move with it okay so anyway that's it for the video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one